Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Arjun Chaudhary. Here are the top stories are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 17th of February. 45 Islamic State insurgents killed in military operation in Afghanistan. Pakistan's Interior Minister contradicts Foreign Office claim admits presence of Islamic State in the country. And Maldivian opposition leader jailed on terrorism charges. And now for all the details. Pakistan's Interior Minister Chaudhry Nisar Ali Khan has said that he never claimed that there was no presence of Daesh in Pakistan. He clarified that he said decision makers of Daesh have no presence in the country. His statement comes as a contradiction to the statement of the country's foreign ministry, which had denied presence of the terrorist organization in Pakistan. Nisar said that there are 45 different terrorist organizations operating in Pakistan, and when people from these outfits break away, they take on the name of Daesh. He said those using the name of IS have been marked and are in the crosshairs of the law enforcing agencies. Earlier, Director General of Pakistan's Intelligence Bureau, Aftab Sultan, had named the militant group as an emerging threat in Pakistan. But the foreign ministry had rebuffed the claim. Pakistan Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif has warned the country's top corruption watchdog, National Accountability Bureau, or NAB, to act cautiously or his government would take legal action against it. Sharif hit out at the agency for carrying out raids on government offices and residences of government officials. Pakistan's top anti-draft watchdog, National Accountability Bureau, is harassing government officials while investigating corruption cases, Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif has said. He indicated the government was considering amending the law if NAB does not act responsibly. The Prime Minister's remark comes after the rulers of Punjab felt the heat of accountability. The NAB is harassing government officers. They are afraid of taking decisions because of the NAB harassment. The NAB terrifies the government officers, hindering them from performing their duty, he said. I have brought the matter to the notice of the NAB chairman a couple of times. He should take notice. Otherwise, the government will take legal action in this regard, he added. The NAB had recently hinted of carrying out a thorough investigation on some of the projects like LNG, Metrobus and Orange Train. Staying on news from the country, at least seven militants were killed during a police shootout in Pakistan's Sharakpur area of Punjab province early on Wednesday. The militants are said to be belonging to Pakistan tehreek e taliban and lashkar e jhangvi outfits. The exchange between the militants and police took place after security agencies received a tip-off regarding 10 to 12 suspicious men riding on six motorcycles for attack on law enforcement personnel. According to the counter-terrorism department, seven men were killed while others fled from the scene. Police also recovered two kilograms of explosives, primer cord, a Kalashnikov, two rifles of 244 bore, and three motorcycles from the scene. Meanwhile, in a separate incident, three Pakistan security personnel were killed and two others sustained injuries when armed militants launched an attack on a check post in Kolo district of Balochistan. All the assailants managed to escape. Authorities have launched probe in both the incidents. Life is a daily struggle for people in Pakistan administered Kashmir. Locals have often hit the streets to draw the government's attention towards their problems, including the falling infrastructure and poor development in the region. A report. Decrepit infrastructure in Pakistan administered Kashmir is making life difficult for locals. Lipa Valley, which is located about 100 kilometers from Muzaffarabad, remains completely cut off from the rest of the world for almost half a year during harsh winters. Recently, a large number of people gathered outside the Central Press Club in Muzaffarabad demanding construction of a tunnel which has been hanging fire for several years. So, 
وادی لپا کے اسی ہزار افراد کا جنور مرنے کا مسئلہ ہے سردیوں کے چھے ماہ میں ان کا رابطہ محضب دنیا سے کٹ جاتا ہے لوگ لندن سے گلف سے اور امریکہ سے مذہباد اگر کسی کے پیروں کی ڈیتھ ہو جاتی ہے وہ پہنچ جاتے ہیں لیکن ہم یہاں سے لیپا نہیں جا سکتے ہیں In the absence of proper infrastructure, people of Lipa Valley have to put up with difficulties during the harsh winters. Many people have lost their lives due to the avalanches while traveling in the treacherous region. In this six months, if someone goes to Lipa Valley, Rishyan to Lipa Valley, then it is often that it is looking at the eyes of the eyes of the eyes. At this time, when the world has become a global village, the most important thing is that وائلیشن ہے سنگین ترین خلاف ورزی ہے پاکستان ایڈمنسٹریٹ کشمیر اپارٹ آف دا ارسٹ وائل پرنسلی سٹیٹ آف جمہو این کشمیر واس اللیگلی اکوپائیڈ بائی پاکستان سکس ڈیکٹس اگو سنس دن پیپل ان دا ریجن ہاب بن سفرنگ از دا ایڈمنسٹریشن ہاس ٹرن ای بلائنڈ آئی تو دا پرابلمز In neighboring Afghanistan, at least 25 Daesh insurgents were killed in a military operation in eastern Nangarhar province, Afghan forces have claimed. The forces have intensified their operation to flush out militants from the province, especially in its Echin district where militants have occupied several villages and highways. The Afghan army said on Wednesday that it has been able to clear off some villages of the Daesh insurgents and is going to continue its operation in the region. Earlier in the month, airstrikes launched by the army had also killed some 40 militants in the region. In Nangarhar's Achin district, near the border with Pakistan, an estimated 4,000 extremists have been occupying villages and highways and causing problems for local civilians. Daesh is active in five districts of the province, mostly in Achin. The presence of Daesh militants in Nangarhar was officially confirmed by the Afghanistan government when they carried out an attack in the provincial capital of Jalalabad in April 2015. In August 2015, the extremists had defeated the Taliban in Achin and captured some villages with the intention to build the region as their stronghold and establish a so-called Khorasan province. The Afghan government has worked with border police and even local militia to build several defences in order to stop the extremist group from expanding in the country. Staying on news from the country, United Nations has raised concerns over the ongoing insurgency and conflicts causing extreme harm to the civilian population in Afghanistan, with particularly appalling consequences on children. A report. The Special Representative of the UN Secretary General for Children and Armed Conflict, Leila Zeroge, has indicated that the lack of institutions to address children problems in Afghanistan is a matter of grave concern. Zeroge is on a week-long visit to Afghanistan to assess the situation of children affected by armed conflict. Her apprehensions have come days after United Nations assistance missions in Afghanistan or UNAMA released its Protection of Civilians in Armed Conflict Annual Report 2015. The report has stated that conflicts in the war-torn country had a devastating impact on children as one in four Afghan civilian casualties in 2015 was a child. UNAMA also recorded a spike of 14% in child casualties in 2015. Zirogi also expressed her concerns on Afghan children, especially girls dropping out of school. Over 40% of Afghan children are out of school due to the ongoing insurgency in the country. Moving on, a Maldivian court has convicted an opposition leader on terrorism charges and sentenced him to 12 years in jail. Sheikh Imran Abdullah of the opposition Adalat Party was sentenced for allegedly inciting unrest during an anti-government rally in May 2015 on the capital island Mali. His party had joined the main opposition, Maldivian Democratic Party, in a rally to protest against the jailing of dissidents by the government of President Abdullah Yamin. Imran was then arrested by the police along with 175 people. He is the third high-profile politician to be put behind bars on terrorism charges in a year under Gayoom's administration. 
The Maldivian government has been facing international criticism for allegedly using the judiciary to punish political opponents. A new immigration trade point between India and Bangladesh is set to open soon. This is expected to boost trade and people-to-people -people contact between the two neighbours. The immigration centre will be inaugurated in India's eastern Siliguri town on February 18th. It is part of efforts by both the countries to enhance cooperation in trade and financial sectors. India and Gaza have a passport to Bangladesh. Bangladesh has a passport to India. For this reason, we have been waiting for 2009. We have been waiting for this reason. We have been waiting for this reason. Financially, uh, development both hoga. Locals look forward to reap benefits from the initiative. Siliguri or Hamloka Yanka Admigalia both push Achauga, Kuki, Hamloko, Gunejana or Taha, Bangladesh, Machanga on the Hogejana Porta, the Yasuistaoga, Yase, Rasta Sode, Ham Jolly Post, Jolly Asseta, Silia, Hamlokalia, both Achai. Aggregate trade between India and Bangladesh stood at $6.9 billion for the 2014-15 fiscal year. India has accorded Bangladesh the status of zero tariff imports for all but 25 tariff lines. The rich sartorial culture and tradition of India were exhibited during a fashion show recently held at India's western city of Ahmedabad. The exotic collections enthralled fashion enthusiasts. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. 45 Islamic State insurgents killed in military operation in Afghanistan. Pakistan's interior minister contradicts foreign office claim admits presence of Islamic State in the country. And Maldivian opposition leader jailed on terrorism charges. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.